right, everyone, welcome. It's Chris Petrie, and welcome. We're having uh, some uh, fun here. We're going to create a beautiful painting. We're going to um, use a photograph on our uh, electronic device. I'm actually using my phone here, and I looked up. Um, if I zoom back here, you'll see I have my cell phone here. So I'm zooming in, and this is uh, Cata Case, Spain. So we're going to actually do a, this painting here. We're going to draw first, do our preliminary light sketch. So we're going to do the step-by-step -step, preliminary light sketch. Then we're going to do our contour drawing. And then we're going to begin and we'll do our a la prima painting. Uh, so here we're not going to do maybe so much as a glazing technique, but we're going to just do an a la prima painting where we start off mostly with the darks in the painting. There's some really beautiful trees and shrubs and interesting darks and shadows here and there in this painting. So that's a great place we can start with some darks, get some darks onto our uh, watercolor paper and in our painting. And then we can start um, working in some of the other uh, medium tones and then finish up with our lighter tones. And we also mix it up too as well. We're not, uh, with a la prima, you're never locked down into any one particular technique. You're, so, you're kind of just going into it and um, basically having the idea you're gonna paint everything at, at one time for the most part um, versus doing a technique where you might do all glazings uh, one at a time, going from light to dark. So, um, in the future, we'll do more uh, glazing technique. We always mix up glazing technique versus a la prima. It's good to know both techniques really well. Helps you in your watercolor painting uh, uh, incredibly. So um, here, uh, again, I just went online, researched a couple uh, uh, photographs online of um, Cadiz, Spain, and. I thought this one was really uh, beautiful. There's like a, a waterway where people are um, swimming and uh, relaxing and enjoying a great time on the beach here. And um, if I zoom out a little, we can see that. So that's the beach there and there's some water and there's some beautiful homes and apartments and things along this waterway. And um, it looks like there might, that's a church uh, in the distance there. And I'm gonna try to, Let's see if I can get that back. So here, my, uh, there we go. That's the only thing with working with phones and things like that. So, so what I actually did is I, I searched out this, this beautiful picture on my phone. Then I did the same thing with my laptop. So I set my laptop across from me where I'm painting on my uh, painting board. So I have a table, I'm standing, I have a table and, um, and my board is just, you know, tilted a little bit upwards. And um, I have my laptop to my right, and that has the picture, this same picture here. So I'm going to be working from a laptop, which is a little bit larger. So you'll, uh, the picture is a little larger, obviously, the photograph that we're working from. So I encourage everyone, if you can work from a larger picture than this, you're going to be better off. You'll see it a little better, the, um, the composition. But even if you work from an iPad, that should be plenty good. Um, sometimes the cell phone's a little small, although you could start off with your cell phone like this, get the overall idea of the shape of the scene, the shape of the undulation of the buildings, and then you can zoom in with your phone to certain sections as you're drawing maybe and sketching. Hopefully we're contour drawing. I'm always trying to uh, promote contour drawing. I think it's the uh, a beautiful way to go with your drawings. And um, okay, so let's start out. We'll do our preliminary sketch again. I looked this up on my cell phone, found my picture I wanted. Then I went onto my laptop, set my laptop up across from me on my art table, wherever you might work. If you're working in a chair, you might be able to set up a little small table across from where you're working or um, uh, if you find that you like to work on a kitchen table, you know, you can set your laptop right on the kitchen table. That's very convenient. And you can do it that way. And this way you have a larger uh, photograph to work from or picture. Um, all right, so let's get started here. We'll zoom out. All right, excellent. And I 
have my mechanical pencil. This is a number seven mechanical pencil, and it's these are great um, if you're working, doing contour drawing, and you're you're going along doing your drawing. You know, you can easily just click your pencil and instead of having to maybe worry about sharpening your pencil as much. So I sometimes use an office pencil though. Those work great too. All right, so let's start out here. Uh, I'm gonna do my typical, as we're preparing, we're going to want to make our, some hash marks on our, our drawing. Another reason, another great reason to have tape on our watercolor paper is you can make your some notes on your tape to help with laying out your drawing and your painting. So let's do that. So here I'm noticing that the building on the left is just about right there, almost to the top of the page. And then um, I'm looking at the other opposite side of the page. And that's about halfway, the buildings on the right-hand side. So I'll make a mark over there. That's where the buildings are. And the water is about two-thirds down to the bottom of the page from the... And you could put a W for water. And uh, put a B for buildings. And this is a really enjoyable scene. There's not, it's not that complex actually. There's a lot of detail in it and we're gonna explain how we're gonna make it more, um, we're gonna sort of tone down some of the details in this painting. Some artists, I know we're gonna look at that photograph we have of Cadaque, Spain and say, oh, there's so many details in it, I, I can't do it, but that's not true. You can do this painting and this drawing. Um, you just minimize the details in it. You, you almost, um, just think in your mind, how can I simplify this scene and not really get um, overwhelmed by all of the detail? And, and we're going to do that. We're, we're going to do that as we go here. So we're going to get the main again, the main, let's say, um, the main points of interest and where they are on the painting. So that church steeple is about here, about a third of the way across So if that's a third, a third, so that's th one third, one third, one third. So about a third this way from the left to right is the um, steeple. Okay. And once you really do this a lot, you'll, you'll be able, you won't have to really maybe make so many hash marks on things. But since we're trying to get a real accurate drawing here, somewhat accurate drawing, and we'll, uh, we'll take our time. And then here we have our, um, there's a, there's a, um, a wall that, there's a wall here along where the water is. And that's about here. There's a wall here. And we can kind of see that the in the scene the beach is a little bit lower over here where the wall is so we'll say about about here so it's slightly lower than this side so the water over here is slightly higher than over here on the left side so we'll just remember to do that water and that's it i think that's all we really need now we're going to just do our preliminary sketch so once we have our some hash marks on so we can kind of um, have an idea. Let's do a super light preliminary sketch just to see if we can get everything um, set on our, our drawing correctly. So I'm going to start here. I'll start off with the church steeple here. And again, I'm going to contour draw this and I'm going to just try 
trying to get a sense of what's here. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. Sometimes you might start your, your drawing and then realize you're kind of maybe having an issue. It's not going to be perfect usually, but... And now I'm going to do the building up here, and this looks like it's slightly tilting a little bit. It's an optical illusion, I believe. And then here, the details don't have to be exact, exact at all. And again, we're just doing a light, super light sketch, just to get everything pretty good. And there's going to be some times when there's some difficult angles. That's where you might maybe just try. I would try myself here. I think I'm just going to try to get the maybe the tops of the of the buildings more accurate. I'm not going to worry about all the. I can also we're going to come back and do a little more um, a little more drawing in here, a little more accurate drawing. Let's say we're just trying to get the overall idea. And then we have this here. And then once we get over, once we get beyond this church, then things are we don't have to worry so much and we just see a lot of detail there and and I think if we just I'm really just making random angles and to get the overall idea there. And then um, at this point, even though this is the preliminary light sketch, I'm going to take a break because I'm starting to, you know, we've been working, you know, 15 minutes or so, uh, 10 or 15 minutes. So let's take a break and then we'll come back and we'll continue doing our light sketch, preliminary light sketch. And then maybe we might have most of it worked out where we don't have to do a whole lot more, but at least let's take a break, um, give ourselves a, a, a bit of a rest here. And uh, that'll help us to relax and, and be a little more focused as we come back. Okay, we took a break. It's always good. Again, take take a few breaks here and there as you're going. Um, really helps to uh, stay focused once we take uh, some breaks. And so we have quite a bit of uh, our preliminary sketch done. We we did the 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 church, the undulating um, shapes of the of the church rooftops and the uh, the top portion of this church here the spire and we worked our way around and then we kind of just did some 
know, kind of random angles, just kind of looking at the drawing from us and in front of us. And again, I have my laptop set up across from me to my right. So I keep looking over to my right as I'm drawing, looking back and forth at my paper, keeping an eye on my pencil as I'm going and looking back and forth at my drawing. And now that we have this pretty, pretty solid, the actual silhouette of the top portion of the drawing, then we can start getting into some more details here. Let's, um, I was working over here. Let me, This contour drawing is probably, I'm going to say, I'm going to stick with this. I don't think I'm going to go over this again. I think I'm getting a pretty good feel for it. But I would suggest if you're doing this drawing for the first time and um, and you need some more time with it, definitely uh, um, maybe do a, a super light sketch first, preliminary drawing, and then you can go back in if you think you need more time. And uh, there's a couple of trees here. I would line up the architecture so these buildings tend to um, like all of these windows here line up with the the arch doorway here so I want to make sure I get that accurate and then there's a few windows on the sides here And there's a roof over here in building, so that kind of obscures that a little. And there's another rooftop over here. And I'm just trying to, as I draw, keep looking at the distances between each thing I'm drawing. So these are rooftops, so I'm looking at the roofs and saying, and trying to look and scale everything. So I say this rooftop is this large, and the next one as I look across from me is a little larger. So I go a little larger with that one. And I just keep going. And then there's another rooftop here in between here. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. In all honesty, there's so much going on in this scene that, as an artist, you have to just realize that no one's going to be looking at one particular area in this scene when you paint it and draw it. They're just going to be looking at the overall picture. So, some things you can improvise and create things that look good to your uh, own opinion. So here I'm going to continue. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just get a light preliminary line here where the water is. That helps me as I'm drawing over here to know where I'm trying to... And the water is about almost halfway on the page if this is the center of the page. The water comes in about almost to the center, not quite. And then it goes out like this, it's kind of a sharp point there. And then the beach comes across this way, all the way over. 
and then we have that wall there just like that so that's good this building is Again, I'm just sort of trying to get the feel here and there's some uh, chimneys on top of this rooftop over here and and there's an arch doorway here. You can leave some things out. That's really a, f a great feeling if when you're creating a drawing and you painting, you just, as an artist, you, look, you say, oh, I'm going to take my own liberty here and just adjust things that's going to make it easier for me. And, and that's what you do. You just take some You maybe draw in some things and you leave some things out. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to draw every window, every detail. I'm just going to go and Okay, and there's some trees in here. Sometimes I draw and then just leave something go for a few, just so I can get some other lines to uh, help see where I have to. Okay, and there's some there's a doorway here. And so we're just continuing on doing our contour drawing. And again, if you can make things up actually as you go, but at, you know, in a sense, if you see a couple angles, you can just you can do the angles and just let them flow. Because you know when you're doing this painting, when you see an abundance of details, as in this scene, um, again, no one's going to be measuring, what, counting how many windows that you put in or lining up angles of things. You can pretty much, you have a lot of freedom, I would say, when you have a painting with a lot of details like this, you're actually, believe it or not, it's almost easier to paint and draw a scene like this because you have more freedom. There's so much going on with it that, you know, you can, again, take a lot of creativity and artist liberty as you're going and no one's going to notice. And we have some darks here. So there's some bushes over here behind this rooftop and, again, lots of interesting things. I'm just going to capture a couple rectangles, a couple squares. There's and that's what I'm doing now. I'm just looking at my picture, my photograph and just And that should be good. That's enough details over here. I just want to make sure I get these uh, a couple windows.
Okay, that looks good. Let's keep going here and And then along here it looks like we have an awning and then we have some trees interesting uh some shade over here there must be some tables and chairs over here maybe there's a restaurant here and uh, so we have some Okay, and then you can see I really um, kind of have most of the drawing complete now. We have the bushes over here, and that's by the church here. And there's some more rooftops here. So we're going to just do some more roof. Okay, now I'm pretty much, I'm starting to... Lose my concentration. Now's another good time. Uh, take it. We'll take another break right now, and we'll relax five, ten minutes, and we'll come back and we'll we'll finish up our drawing. I think we can finish up our drawing now um, at this point over here on the left side, and, and we should be good. Okay, so we took a little break, and now we're just gonna let's go back and look one more time. Just take a look at our uh, our uh, cell phone here. And we'll take a look at our finished painting, our photograph of what we're going to be doing here. Cada Case, Spain. And so you can see um, the only thing left really to draw that we're, we're doing now is right over here, this uh, archway and this building on the left. And a little bit of the uh, trees, I think, here we have to finish up and right in here. Other than that, uh, most of the painting is all, our drawing is all completed all around here. So we pretty much have worked our way through the majority of the uh, drawing. And you can also um, minimize your drawing a little bit. If, if you're, if you want to, you can concentrate most of your effort around the center of the painting. And as you go out toward the outer edges of your painting, you can always uh, minimize the drawing and just put in a few very sparse details with drawing. And then when you go in and do your painting, so when we go in and do our painting, we can add a little more or a little less details as we would like with our brush and paint as we do that. So. We'll zoom back out and we'll continue on our drawing. I did draw most of this pretty much as accurate as I could doing my contour drawing. And now I'll, I'll finish up over here on the left hand side, the lower left hand side. So now I'm going to try to find where I am over here on these sections that I already completed. So that's the main thing is always trying to relate. Like in contour drawing, um, contour drawing is basically trying to relate your drawing to where you've already put down your information. And then as you move along in your drawing, you're scaling everything to what you've already completed. So you can kind of say, well, I made this roof over here. 
Now I'm moving to the left, and what do I see in my drawing? In my photograph, I should say. And then we can kind of look from there and see what we have. There's a lot of information here. I'm going to simplify it and just And there's some trees here. Then I'm going to try to find where this building starts. It starts about right where the window is up here. So a little bit to the left of that. Then I try to look over here and I say, all right, these are the trees over here. Now this is where I'm going to try to merge the right side of my painting or drawing with the left side of my painting. So here my trees are a little bit higher than over here. So I lost, actually I, I did all right here. I just have to make these trees a little bit taller, no big deal. And that actually cures the issue. So I just didn't make these trees over here tall enough on this wall. Now that I do that, I see that it actually matches up pretty decently. And um, again, we don't have to do everything exact. So we have some trees over here. This pretty much stays the same. And then as we work our way over, we notice the archway is here. Then we have this. And I have a little bit of a Okay, the archway starts about here. And again, perfection is not required here. I'm just trying to get this. We want to get this arch really good. That's pretty good there. And then we see that it's Some shadow under there. And then the wall goes here. And again, you can improvise a little. I'm going to leave this a little bit, uh, not as much detail. I think if we get this archway in here, that's going to look really good. And if we have to, we can do a little erasing. We'll just bring this over here. I just moved this wall over here a little bit. Where the water is. And then we have our arch here. And then there's some darks here, some bushes and trees in the distance actually, and there's some buildings over here, and again you have the option to do a lot of improvising on something like this, so you don't have to get every detail, you can really pick and choose where you want to add, you know, um, where you add your details and, and so forth. And
These are the upper rooftops where the clay tile are, the orange clay tile. There's some I think just that little bit of detail is fine. And maybe I'll put this light over here. We can have some figures over here. These are people enjoying the, the day here along the beach, relaxing, and um, a few figures here really make it look good. So that's that's pretty good. That's our drawing. It's uh, pretty much there. Again, uh, always remember if you see a lot of details in a drawing or in a scene, that's actually a really good thing because you can improvise a lot when you're drawing. You don't have to really get everything accurate as long as you're picking up good um, angles and, and uh, getting things somewhat accurate to what you're seeing in the picture. You're you're fine. You don't have to do every single. Uh, detail. Here I see I didn't get this. This is like a small roof here over by these trees and a couple windows and a couple more windows here. And I'm going to make those Make those marks for the uh, clay tiles, just so I remember. All right. That's going to be dark there. And then we have a few people walking here in the arch, archway, and all right. Again, let's we finish our drawing. Let's get prepped now. We'll we'll get ready to go in and we'll start our painting. And again, we're going to go and do. Um, our darks first, get our some of our darks going in our painting first, and that's pretty much really um, sort of the method I like to show is like a la prima. We're just going to go through this painting, not so much do a lot of glazings, but just try to get our darks in first, some of our medium darks, medium tonal values, and then we can uh, see how it shapes up from that point, and then we can just add in the rest of the um, lighter t tonal values toward the the last bit of our painting. Okay, so let's take a break again. We've completed our drawing. We'll come back, we'll start painting. Okay, and we're back from our break and I just put some paper towel over my paints here just to keep them moist. I just dampen a paper towel and then just rest it over the top of the paints. Um, I have my palette taped down to my uh, foam board here so it doesn't move around when I'm painting. That's a big help. and especially for videos here when I'm doing videos. So I'll tape this back down again and we'll chat as we go here. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to show you a quick informational uh, tidbit here on sort of the 
what I can like consider just the two main styles of watercolor. If you're painting watercolors all the time, and you're you probably already do these things, so um, you're probably really familiar with them. I, I may call them something different than than you do. So as an artist, we all have different things we've learned from different studying and different people we follow on YouTube and uh, in books and on videos and all that and all the pro artists out there and the old masters and all the information that we gather as we're going along. But probably most of you will be familiar with either a la prima painting or glazing method. So um, what I'm going to do here is just before we start, let me just, this is the painting again that we're going to so the drawing we completed, right? We got the drawing done and we took several breaks to get through it. It's a challenging drawing. You can do it a lot more simple than this. I like drawing tremendously, contour drawing tremendously. So for me, it's a lot of fun doing this type of drawing. But some, I know a lot of artists, watercolor artists, and from all the comments you send me and everything, and I realize some people don't like as much drawing rather you would rather paint more so some of you rather just get into the painting quicker maybe just do a quick sketch so we'll kind of cover both things quickly before we start to, to paint but this is the again i found something Cadiz, spain barcelona spain beautiful scene here along the water and i really like this photograph so i, I just picked this one and said let's go for it so that's going to be the what we're going to paint, and we already drew this scene. So you can maybe, uh, if you're on a phone, you could even do a sc screen capture of this maybe. Or um, you can find this online if you just type in uh, Cada Que Spain, uh, C-A-D-A-Q-U-E-S. And, okay, we'll zoom back out. So, what we're going to do is, I'll just maybe do a quick, find some paper here. Alright, so I'll take some paper and... And I'll get a pencil here. I'll use a china marker just so that's a little clearer to see on the on the paint uh, page here so if we do it the way we so what we did here is we did the contour drawing so we took our time and we we did all the fine drawing all throughout the page and you know we pretty much got all the details and And we drew every, pretty much all the main details. We left some stuff out, as we said, when we were drawing, right? So that's the first style. And then a second style we can do, let's say this is going to be our a la prima. So this is... A la prima style. And then this will be um, glazing. That's not writing too well. Let's... And I just want to do this beforehand so we we kind of can see that you can approach this painting even though this video I did it a certain way. You can do it. You can make a change to it. So maybe you'll watch this the video full through one time, and then and you'll then you'll start it again and try to um, you're gonna you would be going in and doing the work and drawing everything and painting everything. So so for more of a glazing technique, we might you know we're doing the same thing, but we're not doing as much detail, and maybe we're going a little quicker. Just kind of you know let's we can get the so we would take our time and get the get the real important things here that would be like the the undulating skyline with the buildings and then we you know we would get the water of course and the beach area in the front here and 
the side of this building. And then we capture some details. We put in some of the trees, same as over here. And so these are the two, but more I'm trying to impress the, the painting style. So with glazing technique, we don't get as many details. We, we're not putting in windows with our glazing technique. We might put a few just to say, okay, there's some windows here and there and some other rooftops here. A la prima, we're maybe doing more. If you like to draw, you're going to draw in more of the details. But the painting aspect of it, this is where um, just a quick idea of... So for a la prima... A la prima, we're going to be going in and... You know, we're, we're going to be going in with our darks first, getting those pine trees in the painting. Taking our time. Starting off with the darks. I mean, th this for the a la prima, we're going to start with the darks. And get some of those darks and get them established as we're going, taking our time and... As we go, so that might be where we're probably we're gonna if we're doing a la prima, which which I'm going to do, we're gonna do that. You know, get the darks established, maybe get some of the dark windows in there. We start to do that, right? We're doing more of the darks um, around the painting, also working in some of the shadows with some blue, so. You know, over here, we're starting to get some of those blue shadows in and some of the gold, some of the yellow ochre in some of the buildings, too. So there's the light coming in the scene from the right. So we just remember we're going to put our light insignia at the top of the painting. Some of the areas are going to have shadow some will be more light with the golden color of light this is probably around this time of sunset but that's the approach for a la prima now for glazing the technique which is a little quicker a little more um energetic we might go with we're going to go with um our blue and sky colors and we would start with the sky first and start working the sky colors in a little more water so here was a little less water in the a la prima here we'd be going with more water and then we'd start working right down since we're glazing this in steps maybe two or three different glazings you know we would keep going with the glazing here and um, And I'm just mixing up a little bit of color in the sky instead of having it all. And then here we would look and say, okay, the shadow side is over here. So we would work the glazing right down the page in the shadow sides of the building. And that way we're kind of getting a lot accomplished. We're getting the shadows in as we go down the page with our glazing. This over here is in light. So we want to preserve the white paper over here for that building on the left hand side. Does that make sense? So we're sort of looking at back and forth at the at the pho photograph, and wherever there's shadows, we we work that sky color down in there, and then down here at the bottom of the painting, there's more shadows, and then we would do our put it in our water too as well. Get our water in. That's reflecting the sky pretty much. So we would get the water in here too. And again, I'm going to try to see where I see some shadows tying down in there. Maybe here and there. And that makes a nice pleasing effect if there's shadows sort of tying all through the, from the sky down. Like this.
and then there's a door there so we can put some shadow in the doorway there. So does that make sense? That's the glazing technique really in a in a more simple idea where I'm trying to show you the difference now. So when I'm creating my painting now, I'm going to be doing the a la prima this time. Maybe we'll try this again and we'll do the painting with the glazing technique. And I cover both on my, as you know, if you if, if you aren't uh, subscribed, I just want a shameless plug here. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, consider subscribing. We're doing paintings like this all the time on my channel. Um, so just a little informational. And also I like to say that I also have a second channel. And that's uh, Watercolor in 5, all capitals, Watercolor in 5, and it's on YouTube. And I just started that Watercolor um, YouTube channel just recently, and it's covering all these type of details that we're doing right here, right now. So a lot of times I'm not going to take time out and stop and do this sort of an informational, in, you know, as we're doing a painting. But I, I wanted to really do it because I wanted everyone to see be between the two techniques, really, and how one is different from the other glazing versus a la prima but I'm going to be covering those type of things as well as all, all the different brushes I use and paints and palettes and all that good stuff on watercolor and five and that's just I've just had that for about four months now that uh, YouTube channel it's working out good too it's a lot of fun we have fun there and they're quick five minute videos or so ten minutes okay so we're going on here we're just you know moving on and <clears throat> so Glazing and a la prima. And then, of course, with the glazing technique, once we're at this point, we're just going to start doing these features in the painting. Um, so, you know, the tr you can start putting in the trees and the interesting darks. Once you've done that first glazing, then you're going to start working into your darker darks. And you can kind of fuse both together, which looks great. So as this is damp, a little damp, not too much, we've been chatting here for a few minutes. And you can kind of see, look, it's drying a little bit, the paper. So I can start going in and putting in some of these darker colors where the trees are. And then the water here is a little darker, like that. And we'll have the... So just a general idea, and then, you know, we start putting in some of the darker darks with the burnt umber and French ultramarine blue, and we start putting in some of the windows and, and doorways and things. And You can have a lot of fun with the glazing technique. I liked using this technique a lot, too, as well as the Alla Prima. I use both all the time, and it's fun. You can kind of interchange them when you start to paint a lot. You'll find you'll start to use both of them a lot, and you'll interchange them as you go. Um, okay, let's get into the painting. But before we do that, we have let's take a quick break here, and then and then we can get into starting the painting, and um, we'll have a lot of fun. All right, well, we'll take a ten minute break or so. Okay, so we're gonna get back and start with our painting now. I just have a bucket of clean water and we have, you can see, fresh moist, moist paints and I'm going to start in and we'll do some, some darks here. We'll make some, uh, let's sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. That makes a nice dark dark green and putting in the, tr the tree here this is really cool this is kind of a nice dark here starting out with the darks we're doing a la prima method. Start with the darks first. Get those established. And then we see that a little bit of raw umber. Burnt umber, raw umber. It's, it lightens up a little bit in this archway here. And 
And I'm just going to do the details here as we go. A little darker up top. These are a little darker here. So I add a little bit of French ultramarine blue to darken up the, the windows there. And again, uh, when we're painting, we always want to keep in mind that this is just one very, very small part of the whole painting. So always try to relax when you're painting because no one's ever going to go in and look at one spot on your painting. The, the painting is, is usually looked, you know, when someone is viewing your painting, it's going to be from the whole scene. They're going to see the whole painting. So when you're just doing these smaller sections as you start out, no worries. You don't have to be perfect with anything. You're just trying to get in the basic shape of things and the basic tonal value. So you want to try to get the dark, how dark things are or how light they are as you're starting. And what's fun about Alla Prima is you start out with your darks and uh, this way it's sort of a little easier to work with the darker uh, tonal values because they're really easy to see when you look at the photograph. So when I'm looking over my photograph, I can kind of see all the darks are pretty much, they really uh, are simple to sort of see in the scene. So I can sort of, and I think here, what, there's so many interesting details in this painting. I can really zip around pretty quick here and get some interesting, and I'm not going to be perfect with everything. Maybe some take your time on, make a perfect square there. Then on another one, just make a quick little... That's interesting to see that in a painting when you... Some details are perfect and some are just... Can be a little bit, or all of them can be a little bit just... Um, haphazard and there has, doesn't have to be any exact look to anything. And we can also, which is another good thing here, we'll change around our darks and sort of modulate them. Let's put a little bit of red in here too, a little bit of alizarin crimson. A little bit of purple and that's going to make the darks more interesting too if we can add just a little more color to them and I, if you can imagine if you just mix one color or two colors let's say you just mix French ultramarine blue and burnt umber and then you just went around and started doing all the darks like that that's not going to look as interesting as if you sort of um, mix other interesting colors too a little bit of sap green purple um, you know, a little cerulean here. So if you can try to keep your windows a mixture, but always keeping it dark, that's all you have to remember is really, and some of them can get a little bit of a change in tonal value. Some darks are not quite as dark as others. You might see that if you look at the painting. Go back and change again. Get, I'll get a little bit of a different dark. Make a little bit darker there. I guess the thing with this, these are windows and they're pretty precise. So we would want to try to get that square edge on the top part of the window more. The bottom I don't think is as for the windows. The top of the window is more important to get that square shape. The bottom I tend to let that, you know, sometimes just become like a lost and found sort of look but usually the top of the window you'll see more of that square edge there which happens because of the light And I use a paper uh, tissue just to sometimes dry off 
the brush a little. And we have a <clears throat> we have an interesting dark down here. There's a lighter light across the top where the uh, sidewalk is along the buildings. We could leave that white for now. And then there's a And again, I'm mixing colors. And another fun thing about Ala Prima is you can just do sections and soften some edges like this and then you can pick up and come back to this section a little bit later so you can kind of have fun and move around the painting a little bit more glazing technique you're doing more going through it pretty faster and um, probably with the glazing technique you're not going to move around the painting as much as with the uh, a la prima method And and there's some dark, and you can see I'm really just using this one mixing area here. And I'm mixing uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green to get my dark darks here. And this is the trees. And I just have a fun time here. No real reason to worry about the trees shapes to me. Just kind of trees are growing upwards. So if you flick, if we flick the brush upwards, we kind of get a good feel of a once in a while. A, of the tree branches and, and then we'll and then we can just do some it's pretty dark in that section of the painting you can see and you can change things around maybe make something go beyond And there I see, and I'm going to just tap a few little splashes. Those tend to help loosen the painting up a little bit. There's some blue. That's in shadow under 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 those trees there, so I'm going to leave that. Uh, and we can leave that as it is. And we can move around. So let's move around. We'll go over here a little bit. Sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. things get too, you could tap a little bit of paint.
as you can see, we're working around the page, doing our darks first. Um, we can work in some We can start working in some of our um, roofs here, and we'll mix them up, you know. Some of them are more red, some are more brown, some might have more shadows. If we can do those little round type brush strokes on the roof areas, that's good. We could add in some blue to change up the color a little bit. Maybe this one is more exciting and bright, the color of the roof. Maybe it's a brand new clay roof tile, clay uh, roof tile they put in. And maybe this one's uh, been here for a while and it's a little faded. and. And as you can see, we're having fun. We're getting in our darks, and we're even going to do some exciting rooftop colors. The clay tile roofs here, beautiful looking roofs, and we're just taking our time having fun with this. And we can take a break now and uh, come back, or we can continue a little more. Um, And again, with Alla Prima, you can you can take your time. You can take a break anytime you want. You can finish a section like this, and then we'll say, well, let's take a break, and let's do that. Let's take a break. We've done some good darks here. We got our trees in. Uh, sometimes when we take a break, we look and we go, oh, yeah, I, I could see I could use a little more dark there. You could charge in some darker paint. Usually around the bottom of the trees, it's going to be darker. So while the paint's still damp, you can get that darker feel on the underside of the tree area and some that's in shadow and then we'll <clears throat> we'll come back and we'll we'll continue on but let's take a break now we did quite a bit of uh, painting already uh, and we'll come back in just a few okay and we're back from another break um, perfect time to change the water in our water buckets. Let's do that occasionally. And um, I also wanted to mention too, if some of you um, might have more of a challenge with um, uh, drawing, you have, maybe you don't have as much experience drawing. I know others of, of you definitely have been drawing quite a lot. And, um, but you can always, um, just an option for you if you wanted to get more of an accurate drawing. Um, you can always uh, print out on a printer, print out the picture that, like whatever picture you're going to choose to uh, draw and paint. You can let's pretend this is a photograph. You can just um, print out a picture on a printer and bring it to a print shop and have them print it at a local uh, print shop you might have in your area. And you can place uh, acetate over it, um, plastic film, and uh, and then you can tape tape the film in two places, like both both corners of the um, upper corners, let's say, of your your film, or even just maybe two sides like this and you can lift up and down and 
you can get like a you can get a um, you can just trace let's say this and then maybe go down and do a few like this right so you would go around your uh, photograph with your plastic over top and then you can once you have that you can uh, transfer it onto to paper so then you would just take paper the same size uh, paper you traced it on you'd want to use and then you can use your pencil um, your pencil and again you tape down your plastic so it doesn't move and you tape down your paper so it's secure and then you just lift and, and you can put right underneath you just start getting your pencil lines like that and then if you go off a little bit you kind of can so you can sort of feel around your subject matter like that and you just go a little bit at a time and check make sure your paint make sure your plastic doesn't move at all make sure your plastic is taped down tight as well as your paper and you can just go right through the drawing like that so you can get yourself a nice gorgeous drawing to paint with exactly the way you want like you know of the subject matter you want to, to paint but if you just don't have that um, that confidence let's say yet like you know if you're still practicing your drawing and you're not quite and I still trace sometimes when I'm doing projects and things once in a while I'm tracing with, with my plastic once in a while to get a certain angle I'm having a hard time with with certain angles and things and or with the figure the human form is extremely difficult painting the human form and drawing the human form so just an idea um, if you want to get a picture drawn really nicely and if you don't want to take all that time to draw it even or even if you're decent at drawing but you want to just go through it a lot faster let's say so just an option you have um, for uh, doing something like this uh, where we're, we're doing a larger composition like this so let's continue to paint and again I'm always referring back back and forth to my photograph uh, actually my laptop so I have the picture I chose I have it on my laptop blown up so it's the full full size of the laptop screen so it's almost like um, like an enlargement a large photograph like a 10 by 12 photograph and we're going to continue on and since I have been working on quite a few of the darks I'm just going to continue with that um, since we have the paints mixed and uh, we have the paints already mixed we have I'm going to continue on and you know sometimes we can you can sometimes finger paint things a little bit to uh, you can change modulate colors a little bit a little bit of raw umber in there make it more interesting a little bit of cerulean blue down in the lower areas maybe for the upper areas would be more maybe green and gold and then your lower areas are darker with some shadowing colors blue and green and you mix it up you can change the brush strokes around a little bit again and if we just do those quick upstrokes once in a while those really really read true when you're painting and trying to get those uh, and now I'll take my time a little more here can be some real excitement in your painting because you have the dark trees and the shade and then you have some light back in here where the walls are and maybe there's some interesting there's a restaurant back here or and you make some stories up as you go too and you kind of pretend maybe there's a restaurant over here and a cafe and uh, some people and enjoying the day and so you're thinking there's a mystery involved here with the 
So behind behind these trees is a cafe, let's say, and then you can make a door over here. Let's make a door back over here. We'll make a nice dark here. We can make a, a nice door here. A couple windows, maybe. And some cool shadow colors. We can reactivate some of that blue. And we'll leave some white of the paper as well. It's always good to leave some sparkles of white paper in a scene that has sunlight, like this, an outdoor scene. And I notice we're, we're by this archway here and this That has darks too. Let's do those. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green. And I'm constantly looking back at the picture and I notice that about halfway And again, we're using rough paper here. I don't think I mentioned that. We're using Arches rough paper. When we use uh, rough paper, especially Arches rough, it's an incredibly beautiful paper. You can get a lot of these little sparkles of light because the paper's rough and it's sort of, uh, it's a natural, um, a natural um, help to getting more variations in your, your paintings. If you can use Arches rough paper, you're You'll find it really uh, is a, a huge help to get some more effects and more texture in your in your painting. Okay, so we're really in good shape now. We've got a lot of darks in. Um, let's do some more over here. So these windows here. Over here on the left side of the painting. This is where I'll be more creative with my ideas on this here. Um, there's some really interesting wrought iron railings by these windows. And these are probably some doors and things. That can, there's little balconies and things. So I'll be a little more creative and add some interesting um, a design to it with some uh, details later on after we're pretty much... Uh, There's some darks up here too. <clears throat> and as you can see here, as we do our darks and we work around our painting, you can you can almost feel it's like really starting to come together and really look interesting. And so we have some real really nice darks, um, sort of modulating on the paper. So that's a place where your eyes are going to go to the darks as you're going through the painting in a fashion like this. And we do have a few more uh, windows. Let's do those. We're going to continue. We'll do our darks.
and I'm always careful to sort of watch my painting when I'm leaning my hand down on the painting, that I'm not leaning into any fresh washes that we might have just done, so... And if you have a problem with a, a shape, you can just quickly blot it up with some tissue. If you see it kind of doesn't look right, the shape that you make with your brush, it's better to just blot the whole thing up and then start again versus trying to straighten it out with a little bit of, uh, of tissue, trying to blot out a certain section. So that's good. And uh, there's some... There's a dark here. Should use a smaller brush. I like to use the same size brush if I can the whole, all the way through. Sometimes. And there, that works good. Trying to do a few lines and not Leave some breaks in the lines. That always looks good. Now I'm careful to start to look and, and see where some of the darks are getting lighter now. So I'm starting with my darkest darks and now I see there are some that are a little bit lighter, so I'm going to go in with some raw umber. So if you notice in the photograph, some are not as dark. I want to try to stay as close as possible to the tonal values that I'm seeing in the photograph, because that's real, you know, that's real, that's a a camera captured those darks and lights, all the tonal values of this scene. So if I try to stick as close as I can to those colors and tonal values as I can, I know I'm going to have a better chance at having a better result with my painting overall. Here, I didn't see this in the picture, but I'm going to try to make this connect. And I might, I might try to do that in certain locations, try to connect up the, the dark areas a little bit. And this has been a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun doing it this way. Really, I can take my time as much as I want. You know, I could say I'm going to retire for the night and take some, uh, get some rest and go to sleep and wake up the next day and continue working on this. This is, that's what's really fun about this, doing the alla prima method here is really fun. And uh, let's continue here. We let's... Uh we're going to do some more darks here. We have sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Now here I might take some Artist Liberty. I might make these, these trees over here a little bit sparser. I won't make them as like dense and thick as the other ones possibly just to I think it might look a little better and you can see I'm just you know kind of moving my brush around getting interesting uh and then some upstrokes for the I can use some burnt umber there French ultramarine blue for the just to get some different darks under here And 
a little more, uh, so let's say, some raw sienna and sap green. And some yellow ochre, maybe. And then I'll try to blend those in a little more. French Ultramarine Blue, Cerulean Blue. This is a lighter tonal value, so this is going to be more water, less less paint. The shadowing behind here. And there's some raw, raw umber too, mixed in there. In the shadows, it's got warm and cool. And some white paper too we leave. And a little splashing, just to give us the feel of the trees there. And I feel better about making it darker along the bottom here, just a little more. And what I notice is if you're if you're looking at this, and I'm looking at this here, we're looking at it and saying, all right, how do we feel about this? What do we think? As I'm doing these tr trees over here, you know, I, I kind of think they're looking too much detail to it. And it looks kind of funny, but I know it's going to look okay because we have a lot more painting to do left here, so we won't see this as much. But it does look a lot like a lot of information as far as a lot of brush strokes, a lot of, you know, I did some finger painting here a little bit. And there's a lot of colors, changes, and things. I think it's going to be okay. It might be an issue, actually. This might cause the painting not to look as great as we would like it to. But, again, I'm trial and error, too. I'm doing some experimenting as I go. And uh, as we all do when we paint, it's an experiment, you know. In, in the process. All right, so let's take another break and we'll come back and continue on. All right, we're back from another break and we're just gonna tidy up the palette a little bit. I'm gonna spray the palette, use some paper towels. We'll just start with some more fresh paint and colors. Okay, now we're gonna have some interesting fun. Um, this is a painting you can really spend hours and hours on, and, it, and that's fine. And, and I would encourage everyone, you know, try it different ways. Maybe try this painting like we were saying, we're a la prima. And so as we said, we right now we're doing the a la prima method on this painting where we did all the darks first, and then now we're gonna start working in our middle tones. And, that, and that's time, more time consuming. It takes more time to do it this way, but it's a beautiful look. And then we have the glazing method, which is basically going a little faster, doing the middle tones first and the lighter tones. So we would do a sky wash first and then bring the sky wash down into the shadow areas and, um, and then sort of work in our darker tones a after that. And so those are the two methods and we've kind of did a little bit of both here, but mostly the a la prima method. So now what we're gonna do is we're just going to go a little quicker because we do have a lot of detailed information on here. So since we have a lot of detail already in this picture, 
Um, we can absolutely be safe with going with more of a faster approach now, sort of filling in the middle tones, and um, it should work fine. I might go with a few more, um, a few more darks, but I, I think we'll we'll let's start doing some of the middle tones here. Now, when we're doing our middle tones and lighter tones, we definitely have to change our water out so we get fresh, clean water. When you're working with the darker tonal values, you don't have to worry so much, maybe, with uh, changing out your water uh, in your water bucket. But once you start to do your lighter tonal values, you're going to want to have fresher, cleaner water. And uh, let's... Uh, I'll start here, we'll use some yellow ochre, raw umber, and we'll start to we'll start to do this uh, shadow over here on this side, and I'll mix in some warm and cool. And I keep a uh, tissue in hand here so I can tap off some water to keep my brush the colors on the brush and the water on the brush, you know, at a decent amount, especially when we start doing the lighter tonal values, we want to be careful when we're doing our darker tonal values, you, you can, um, doing darker tonal values, you're basically almost just using straight paint. And you rinse off your brush and you check a little water off on the paper towel or the um, sponge or tissue. When you're doing middle tones like this, um, we have to be more careful with the um, how much water and paint is on the brush for sure and let's see here and I'm using the same three uh, cerulean blue and uh, yellow ochre this is more of a shadow over here too and what really can help too is just you know definitely modulate colors use different colors that tends to be a really good way to go versus trying to just use one one color that tends to really doesn't have a that much of a pleasing effect if it's all the same color in any one area now here this has some really nice I'll use raw sienna which is a little more transparent And again, we have to be careful when we go over those darks with a wash because they'll reactivate and can... So that's where it's good to work kind of just a few brush strokes to get some tonal value onto the paper, some color, a little bit of that beautiful golden color of the sunset here. We're in Cadaqués, Spain, Barcelona. Beautiful area. There's some water down here. People are perhaps finishing up the day at the beach here, enjoying some sunshine and some refreshing water. And there's cafes along here and restaurants and all kinds of great things. And this is a fun painting to do. And uh, I'm just going to keep working the uh, washes here and trying to. This will dry lighter. So this looks a little dark right now, but um, I'll also use a little purple here, maybe, and some blue. This is darker over here. And if I keep using these same colors, now I've established what my shadow colors are for the most part. I can keep using them along 
and if you see that there's some light here and then some shadow, no problem. You can also make up some more shadow color over here. We can add some details over here. I'm going faster now, so it's kind of tough to uh,
So I'm trying to work around the painting here and do the shadows and So I'm just mixing some more color here, I see. And that really helps here. I do see some red and orange colors here, and it kind of makes a nice feel for the um, for the roofs, the clay tile roofs. And I have to add more reds here and there, uh, and oranges for the roofs here and there. But for the most part, we're looking pretty good here. And we can continue with our um, just our shadow mix here, which was um, pretty much cerulean blue, purple, and um, some cobalt blue. And I see some uh, more trees over here. We might have, you can also fill in some darks if you if you think there's some spots that might have you missed with the darks, no big deal. You can also fill in the darks. Um, once you're um, finishing up the painting and trying to get most of the other washes on here. So we're just gonna continue on. And some darks here and there, and there's some, I see some dark red here, it must be some paint. So there's a, a wall here that's painted red. And maybe I'll just, make sense to just paint this all that color. And, you know, you can uh, definitely leave a few places on the painting where it just can be left with just white paper and it's not, there's so much detail in this painting, you almost, uh, it's no big deal. You can leave some spots where there's um, just some white paper here and there. And we still have to put the sky wash in. And... Uh, Okay, this over here, we have that nice and I put a little bit of the yellow ochre on this wall, but that's pretty much white and once we start doing the sky color it'll the sky color will wrap around this building over here and, and make it look a lot more interesting. And we also have some uh, ground area we're going to put in some water and some figures and so forth. And 
and we'll do some yellow ochre and cadmium red. And this is more the shadow side. Cadmium orange, maybe. And then we just, it's darker on this side, the, the, so the red gets darker over here in the shadow, and we could add some, some blue to that. Again, if you go over a spot, no big deal. And we'll mix some of that with this, a little bit of blue, and And if you tend to think um, things get a little sloppy and you're, you know, I can see here I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit, I'm trying to rush a little bit here, but I mean, it's pretty much, it's coming along okay. All right, so we have, I'm going to take a break here and um, we'll do a little more detail to this over here along this uh the tops of the buildings over here because there are buildings here and I want to capture that like feeling of lots of buildings and city that city feel that beautiful city feel here in Spain and okay so we'll be back and we'll finish up the skyline area here and we'll put in a sky wash and some water and some figures and we'll be good all right we're back from a break and you've made it <laughs> this is a extremely uh, labor-intensive uh, painting here we have and it's it went it actually went really well so far we act we had a good time we had fun we did our darks first of course and uh we did our medium tones and we're ready to do the sky and the water in the beach area and really this part we can do a few things that are really going to help us um to capture this and and um give us a little more of a um i would say like a trouble free time going through this portion now again, this is the a la prima method, so um, we're going to try to keep maybe a little bit more um, of a detailed look to it. And what we'd like to do here is get a sharp, so I'm using a, a nice uh, pointed uh, round brush. And I'm going to make sure that I... We're going to do the sky wash now. And I want to make sure that I wet the paper along the edge very carefully so that I don't get too much uh, sky color running into the, um, especially the whites of the paper. So like this small little abutment wall here on the top of this peak of this roof here, this uh, top of the roof, I'd like to keep that and not have any w wash go over that blue, blue sky wash. So, and I'll just go around the whole, very carefully around the whole tops, the undulating tops of our buildings and rooftops and citadels and all the interesting details along here. Same with this one here. I might even leave a little spot of white paper, dry white paper, so you can actually... And, and believe it or not, if you just dampen the paper like this, just a little bit, like I'm doing here with the sharp brush, it'll keep the, the wash from flowing down into your 
painting. I know there's been times, you know, where I've done a painting like this, same kind of style using all the details, and then I use the sky wash, and the sky wash floods down over the painting, and next thing you know, I'm like rushing around, I'm grabbing the tissues and trying to blot the, the water up. So this actually just saves a little bit of um, worry about the sky wash flowing down into the um, into the painting, especially these red roofs and things, right? Red usually, uh, the red colors, like in my palette, um, I use the cadmium red, cadmium orange, uh, yellow ochre. These colors, when they get wet, they, they tend to really um, become active and they, they move around a lot and they'll, they'll kind of get out of control pretty quick. So I, um, that's why, again, I'm doing this, especially because of the red paint on the roofs, the clay tile roofs. They're beautiful clay tile roofs. I don't want to disturb that too much. I want to try to see if I can keep that really nice clay tile roof looking good with the bright colors, the high intensity reds and oranges. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm just going around the whole painting carefully with just a little bit of water on the brush just so that I don't have a problem with the water flowing down into the other areas, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Now I've kind of made a little bit of an insurance plan all the way across the tops of my roofs and now we can do our sky wash. So I'm going to, I'll use a, a mop brush. We'll mix up some sky color. Um, we're going to use the same blues we've been using all, all along. Uh, cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. So we'll use a little bit of each of the blues. A little bit of purple. Just a tiny bit of purple in there. And uh, cerulean. And we'll also add some of the orange and yellow. Just so that it has a bit of um, the same colors that are all in this area of the painting, the center, you know, through the center section of the painting. We want some of that in this blue mix. Not a lot, just a little bit. It will, it will make the, everything look a lot more, uh, a lot more, uh, harmonious with the rest of the painting so that it, in essence, uh, And we're just doing a light wash here. I'm just going back in here. And as you can see, the water just flows really nicely. And, and if you do have a little bit of spots, <clears throat> a little bit of paper towel, can have fun with the brush here, the mop brush, you know, put on some good wash in the sky here. You can uh, mix up more sky wash carefully. French ultramarine, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a little touch of purple, a little bit of that, a little bit of the red and the uh, yellow. And that's really perfect. That that really works well, and it really. Um, you can see how the painting is all coming together now, really nicely. Um, that you know, when you add in the sky color, that really explains the scene a lot better with the sky color and 
doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll just do our water. We'll take that same blue and we'll just go right down in the water. We'll add some sap green to that. We should add a little sap green to our sky color too, but water is a little more, tends to have a little more green in it. And that's the, um, now here when we do our sky uh, water color, we're gonna, right away, actually we'll let, we'll let this sit just a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll reflect some of these darker greens. So we put in the sky color, or the water color, sky color first. Then we take the same wash, same color wash, move it down into the water with a little green added to it. Then as this is sort of drying a little bit, getting a little more damp and drier, we'll let that sit for a minute and we'll take our time and we'll mix up our greens that we, we were mixing up before. And that was... Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine, French Ultramarine, Burnt Umber, Sap Green. That was really our predominant mixture for the trees. Okay, now that we have that color mixed up, we'll let this dry a little more and we'll put some shadowing down in the water. And we'll also put some shadowing in here for the windows. But that's best done when this dries a little bit. So we'll, uh, we'll let this dry just a little bit on the, the bottom. And now, since I have a little bit of time, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the blue. And I'd like to just do this a little bit. Get, get, not too much being too fussy, but let's That one spot was bothering me there with that white paper, but the rest looks pretty good. I see a spot I want to... fix up a little bit. I have clean, fresh water now so that I can make some corrections here. You can see I'm trying to make this repair a little bit over here, trying to wash out that blue a little bit. That's better. Okay, so now this is dr dried a little bit, the water. And this is probably good to uh, start putting some washes in of our tree reflections. <clears throat> so let's do that. Let's do our tree reflections. And let's remember, reflections are wavier. So we don't want to really get too fancy with them. If we just put that a little bit like this, and make sure we go plenty dark. French ultramarine, burnt umber, sap green. We just want to make sure it's dark enough. There we go. See, we, that's what we want. That darker. And uh, actually, yeah, that'll be perfect. And And that gives you that kind of, if you do the side to side kind of feel, that gives a little bit of uh, the water effect. And then, and then also like this. So either a little bit of wavy going back and forth or, the, you know, the, de the feeling of like that. And the same here. And wavy, some down strokes, side, side to side. Then we go a little darker over here. Burnt umber, French ultramarine. This is a darker shadow, so we want to capture that. And we wet our brush a little bit and just... And if it goes like it doesn't look that good, that's all right. We could blot it up a little. If you mix too much of one color, you can always blot up real fast and then just go back in and like that. And I'll just do a little bit of this. 
this here. Water's fun. You don't have to be too careful with water. It's more fun. You can just have a good time. It's reflections in the water, so no one's going to really be thinking about it too much or worrying about it and trying to figure out any details about it. It's just water's there and it's fun and the reflections go with, you know, all different directions and, and that's that's good. And if you wanted to put some just for interest, a little bit of red and some red and uh, orange. Here and there, maybe a little spot of, and what it does is it sort of just balances the painting a little more. And we just Okay, and then we'll take some yellow ochre. That's a good uh, color for sand, a little bit of burnt umber. And we'll just do some sand here, feeling of sand. Again, the arches, rough paper, beautiful for sand effects. If that bothers you where you see the um, paint drifting up into the beach area, no problem. You could take a tissue. Like that. Then I dry my brush like this and just do a couple. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll do some uh, details here. We'll take some French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. I wanted to do some of the um, interesting details over here on the left side. Um, so maybe some, uh, I thought some of the uh, Just a few railings. Like that. And these are fun too, doing the details with the um, with a needlepoint brush so you can have um, fine detail. You can Render it quickly so that there's a few details here and there. So you can see you can do some fine detailing. There's some uh, 
over here you might see a little more detail closer. And then as some of the details become faint, do some finger work here. And I'm going to make the details different colors. And I'll make the, um, the figures, I'm going to make red and uh, cadmium red and uh, yellow ochre. And then maybe we'll go with um, some uh, some different colors here. We're just um, just making some different uh, colors here and just some figures to kind of make the painting look really interesting and fun. People out and having an enjoyable day and. some details we could just uh, pretend there's a some details with maybe maybe there's some people a few people in the water so you can make a few details people maybe swimming in the water and Okay, perfect. So now we have uh, really everything is perfectly uh, balanced details here and there. Some just plain washes like the sky wash and the water wash, pretty simple washes. And then some simple washes along the buildings where I didn't do a whole lot of detail. So once you get in some details, you're, you're pretty... Uh, pretty much set and you could go back in and do a couple more details if you wanted you could take a brush and just maybe make a couple but I think that's good that that reads pretty good here where it's a nice balance of detail A nice balance of detail and uh, and then just some free free flowing watercolor paint.
And now's the perfect time. This is good. We can call this finished. And if I start doing too much to the details, then it becomes just too many details. So just the right balance of uh, details and more simple uh, looking uh, washes and subject matter. We'll take the tape off and see it looks always better with the tape peeled off and you see that nice crisp edge. And we'll zoom in a little bit. See if I can zoom in a little bit more. All right, hope we had a lot of fun. This was a longer video. Thanks for sticking in and really uh, following along on all the uh, details of how we created this painting. It took a little more time and a little more effort with the drawing, of course, and also the painting, but it's well worth it to do a really good size uh, rendition of a beautiful scene like this in Spain, Cadaque, Spain. And um, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.